the only Boeing landmark, well, I'm not going to say only, but it's one of the major ones where it's not an actual articulated surface. It's a greater trochanter, right? Because the greater trochanter is on the femur. It's not anywhere near the socket and the actual sacrum. Mm. So the greater trochanter, do you guys know how to find it? Easy way. Uh, just right here somewhere? <laughs> okay. So palpating around, if you find a general area, the greater trochanter is attached to the femur, right? So if I rock the femur back and forth, it'll stick out, right? And you can feel that. It's not very capable at all. I can't take a look at So the greater trochanter, if you go internal, external rotation, it, it's um, the bone that's going to ride over, and your thumb will ride over it. I see. Okay, so his greater trochanter is here, and Barbie will be impressed if you know that. Okay, extra point. So that's going to be the axis. Your stationary arm is going to bisect the trunk, mm -hmm. and then when he goes into flexion, come up as far as you can, it's going to, your movement arm is going to what, bisect? Greater trochanter? The lateral side, right, oh, of the femur. Yeah. So, um, if you're measuring hamstrings or hamstring tightness, this is as far as it goes. Mm -hmm. All right, relax, bend your leg. He's able to go further if you take off the hamstrings, right? Uh, so that's true hip flexion, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Taking off the hamstrings. So should we take off the hamstrings? After. Okay. Right. That knee yeah. or if she says hip flexion, say, well, do you want me to measure it against um, the hamstring, which is going to limit my range of motion, or do you want it to be true without soft tissue impediment, right? Mm -hmm. So after. Yeah. And remember, this is not a specific bone, right? It's easy to say bisecting the trunk, mm -hmm. bisecting the femur. femur. Axis is what? Greater trochanter, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So for extension, it's going to be the same exact thing. He's going to roll over. Mm -hmm. You're going to line up the same landmarks. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to go up towards the ceiling, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And with that one, um, you can have the knee bent and have him go up, or you can have him straight and go up. Mm -hmm. doesn't really matter. Okay. okay. Yeah? Any questions? Yeah. Nope. Yeah? Sounds good. Okay. And should you always measure the same length? Like if you have to do both? Reduction and extension, should you always do the same length? Yes. Always. So when you're doing this, when you're doing range of motion for whatever joint, it's not going to be just for fun, right? They're going to be coming back for from a surgery or whatever, mm -hmm. right? So there would be no purpose to. Right. Mm -hmm. Unless you're doing it just to have baseline measurements if you didn't take baselines before. Mm. Right. So it's going to be on the injured one. Okay. So that's hip flexion and extension. Right? Okay. So then we're going to measure knee flexion and extension, right? So how much knee extension should we have? Zero. Zero. No? Zero is the norm. Zero is the norm. Mm -hmm. Some people are able to uh, go deeper. Okay. Right? Okay. So, am I able to measure knee flexion like this? No. Can you have to push? Be pronated? What? Can you, can you like push down your... On the table? Oh, you towel? Or is it with a towel oh. underneath? Even if I have a towel this big, uh, am I still okay. able to measure no, no, knee no. flexion? Oh, down below. So, like, Move down it below out, AV duct? No, not off the table, but just something. Or knee flexion? Oh, no, no, knee flexion. Oh, oh, oh. Knee flexion. Knee flexion. Yes, so How am I going to measure knee flexion? Get off the glutes. Get to the glute. Yeah. Or I can just have them flip over, right? Yeah. yeah. So go ahead and go prone. For me, if I have them like this, right? So if I'm going to. Line it up with the lateral side of the um, knee, mm -hmm. bisecting, lining right. up with the greater trochanter, okay. right? Because mm -hmm. that's that bisects the femur. Down here, if I I can do this, right? Mm -hmm. Relax for me. See, I can push down, see if there's a bony blockage, or if I have to do active going to pull to your butt, or if I can say it's just 
weakness that he's not able to go any further. Mm -hmm. Relax, or I can apply, apply that overpressure. Mm -hmm. mm. Right? So if I have them, some people do it supine, and they say, all right, pull your knee to your butt as far as you can, which is fine. It's not wrong. But for me, this works. Right? I'm able to do this, line it up with the lateral malleolus. Mm -hmm. Right? And I'm able yeah. to say, okay, he's able to get to there. This way, it's you can do active or passive. Now, if I have you supine, mm, limit. you can do active. How do you use passive supine? Mm. It's nothing, okay. something more there. difficult, yeah. right? So this way, I like to do. Good. All right. Yeah, just do it that way. <laughs> um, then what is it? Ankle. Oh, can we see that sheet? Can we get that sheet from the Dorsiflex spinal flex? Yeah, dorsiflex spinal flex inversion U version. Yeah. Oh, you guys missed one. Okay, so have a seat. AB, AB, can you get that? So oh. it's your rotation okay. at the end. Right? Just top sheet, yeah. The sheet. So, yeah. with internal external rotation, like I said, with any other internal rota external rotation or permission supination, external internal rotation, perpendicular to the floor, you can have the stationary arm down or up. It's all general preference, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Just as long as you know how the going on works, right? So this is perpendicular. I have them go external rotation. Which way is this foot going to go? Right. No, in. His knee, I mean, his, his leg goes in, inward. So for external rotation of the hip, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm here mm -hmm. and I say external rotation, I put it in. Yeah. Right. So don't get confused on Barbie's exam. If she says do range of motion, external rotation of the hip, don't say, oh, external rotation. Right? Because that's external rotation. Yeah. So say, okay, this is external rotating, foot's going this way. Right? So with this, you want to make sure that. He keeps his foot as stationary as possible at this 90 because mm -hmm. it makes it easier for you, right? Because then you can just bisect the malleolus with this moving arm, right? As opposed to if he goes into inversion, it's more difficult to see. But if he keeps this neutral and goes that way, then you can bisect malleolus, right? Same thing when he goes into external rotation. Goes into external rotation. If I keep this, so I'm going to keep this. Perpendicular to the floor, and then I'm just going to bisect mm. the malleolus. Yeah? Yes. Okay, so that's internal external rotation. Then at the foot, flexion extension is going to be done from the lateral side. Mm -hmm. Okay? So with flexion and extension, he is going to, so if he's at 90 90, I'm going to, my axis is going to be where? The, for the bony, bony prominence. Lateral, lateral malleolus, lateral, lateral right? Stationary arm can be lined up with the fibular head, right? So it's going to butt, same rule, bisect, oh, what? It's the fibular head, okay? So lateral malleolus, fibular head, bisect, and then it's going to be, um, it's the same thing as with the wrist. Because I'm lined up with the lateral malleolus, it's not going to be lined up with the fit. It's going to be parallel to the fit. Mm -hmm. Right, so the same rule applies. When he goes into dorsiflexion, flexion, it's going to be parallel because I'm lined up right here with my axis. Yeah. I can eye it or I can say, all right, I'm going to stay lined up with my fib, move down, and then line it up physically on the fib. Same thing, whatever you guys will feel comfortable with, right? So then he has, because I started at zero, right, starting at zero or near zero, he went into dorsiflexion. flexion, he had like 20-something degrees. What's the normal? 20... Dorsi, Dorsi, 50, 50 plantar, plantar yeah. right? So then it's going to be the same thing for plantar flexion. Mm -hmm. Stationary arm is going to be where? Um, 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 okay. Line up on so the fibular head, right? Mm -hmm. Pointing at the fibular head, which bisects the Lateral lower leg. Rails. The axis is going to be where? On the ankle. So the mm -hmm. lateral malleolus, mm -hmm. right? And then the moving arm is going to be where? The fifth um, metatarsal. The fifth met, right. Okay, perfect. So then 
So he's starting at neutral of 90, going to planar flexion, punch your foot as far down as possible, push, 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 push. He goes down, and because he started at zero, he went this way, he has 40. Oh, okay. Right? So with this one, people get confused because, oh, they're going down. Yeah. And yeah. Says, oh, he has 130 degrees of <laughs> planar flexion. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you're starting at zero, you're following this zero, mm -hmm. he goes down, goes up, four. Okay. Right. Okay. Inversion, inversion, last one. Uh -huh. Very simple. Same thing. So this one is probably, you're going to be furthest away from the body with this one. Because it's very difficult to keep this lined up on the foot because you're going to break your gonion. Yeah. Right? So your visual landmarks is going to be between the malleolus, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to be lined up with the tip, tip tuberosity. Mm -hmm. And then when he goes into inversion, his shoe is going to be off, right? Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do for inversion is I want you to bring the inside of your big toe as far across your body as that way by keeping the leg straight. Okay? So bring it in. So that's going to be his inversion, and you're going to line up with a third, right? Because mm -hmm. you have five toes, third. <laughs> okay. So the axis is going to be. Uh, I don't know. Okay. No. Oh, the third. Sorry. The axis of rotation. Axis. So the axis of rotation. Between the two malleolus. Between the two malleolus, right? So you're bisecting something, mm -hmm. right? So between the two malleolus, mm -hmm. the stationary arm is going to be where? Like along the, along the tip, right? Pointing at the tip tuberosity. Mm -hmm. And then the moving arm is going to go where? Um, you have five toes. To the third. To the third, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to bisect something. If it's bisecting the foot and he's going into E version, the third met mm -hmm. is the middle of the foot. Line it up with the third met, not the third toe, the third met. There's a mm -hmm. difference, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's the same thing with the hand. If I'm lining up with the fingers, my fingers have more range of motion than my met. Mm -hmm. So you're actually lining up with this third met. Mm -hmm. It's not the third distal yeah. phalanx, mm -hmm. proximal phalanx. It's the yeah. third met, right? That's the just the knuckle, right? So well, all right. So That's this whole bone is your met, right? Mm -hmm. This whole thing. That, this whole thing is your meat, and it's hard to see because on skeleton there's no meat on there. Mm -hmm. But it's the third meat, and the same thing with the foot. You have toes, you don't line up with the toes. Some people can point their toes in weird directions. Mm -hmm. They can only move their meat so far, okay. right? So on this skeleton, point out the meat for me. That long, right? So. The mets are the longer mm -hmm. ones. Same thing with the hand. They're the longer ones. Okay. So you don't line up with these, you line up with these. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay. Sounds good. Is that it, everyone?